This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but I'll talk more about that later. Tesla has quickly become a global leader in EV manufacturing, not only when it comes to volume, but also when it comes to efficiency and profitability, but it was not always this way. In this video, I want to compare where Tesla was when it comes to manufacturing back in 2012, and when they were just a tiny inexperienced EV startup ramping up their first high volume factory in Fremont, California, to Tesla manufacturing today and also discuss how Tesla's next generation factory in Mexico will take manufacturing efficiency to a whole new level. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. You wouldn't know it by looking at Tesla today, but just a little bit over 10 years ago, Tesla was a small startup just beginning to ramp their first high volume factory in Fremont, California, which began by building the 2012 Model S. Now this was not Tesla's first electric vehicle, but that was the original Roadster, which was discontinued in January of 2012. But the Model S was their first from the ground up EV, one that was also designed to be produced in a much higher volume. Fast forward to today here in 2023, and now Tesla has a global manufacturing footprint with an installed annual capacity of around 1.9 million vehicles per year as of the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. As I trace how Tesla got to where they are today and where they will be in the near future with their next gen factory, let's step back to 2012 when Tesla was beginning to ramp up their Fremont factory and talk about just how much Tesla has improved since then. In 2010, Tesla bought the Fremont factory from GM and Toyota, who had previously run the factory under their joint partnership, New United Motor Manufacturing Incorporated, or NUMI for short, company name. According to Electrek, at its peak under GM and Toyota's ownership, the factory was able to build 428,633 vehicles in 2006, which is a production number that Tesla recently surpassed. When it comes to the broader US auto manufacturing market, according to Bloomberg, for the full year 2021, Tesla's Fremont factory was the most productive auto factory in America. And remember, this is a retrofitted factory, not one that Tesla built from the ground up like their newest factories. What Tesla has been able to accomplish so far at their Fremont factory is incredible, but it did take them a while to get to where they are today. Tesla's newer factories are ramping at a quicker rate, which we'll talk about uh, later on in the video, but nonetheless, as a baseline that we'll use to compare later on to Tesla's other factories, I want to dive into a brief timeline of Tesla's Fremont factory ramp, but before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you're currently considering a solar and battery backup installation at your home, or if you are looking to upgrade your current electric panel, you definitely need to check out SPAN. Replace your old electrical panel with a SPAN smart panel to access remote circuit level control and energy generation and usage monitoring with their iOS or Android app. With all of the data that this smart panel will allow you to have at your fingertips, you'll be able to use that data to make smarter energy usage decisions and even possibly save on your energy bills. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put CleanerWatt in the comments section so they know that I sent you. Now for the full year 2012, they were able to deliver 2,650 vehicles. And based on my research in 2013, they were able to produce 22,000 vehicles at their Fremont factory. In 2014, that number increased to around 35,000 being produced that year. Then over 50,000 in 2015, over 75,000 in 2016, over 103,000 in 2017, over 245,000 in 2018. And since then, if you fast forward to Tesla's Q4 2022 update letter, Tesla mentioned in their presentation that at that time, Tesla's Fremont factory had an installed annual capacity of around 650,000 vehicles per year when you look at the Model S, X, 3, and Y lines combined. In July of 2022, as was announced by Elon Musk on Twitter, Tesla's Fremont factory actually achieved an amazing milestone. And since that factory began production in 2012, roughly 10 years later, they were able to hit their 2 millionth car built. 
So while it took approximately 10 years for Fremont to build their 2 millionth car, Tesla's newest factories, especially Gigafactory Shanghai right now, is ramping at a much quicker pace. Unlike Tesla's Fremont factory, which was retrofitted to meet Tesla's needs, Gigafactory Shanghai was Tesla's first from the ground up EV factory, and this allowed Tesla to design it in a much more efficient way. As you can see in this graphic that Tesla included in a shareholder letter, the different manufacturing steps at their Fremont factory happen in different buildings, and throughout the various processes, these parts have to be moved from building to building. This is of course somewhat inefficient, so with Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai, they build it such that it has a much more streamlined design, and you can see there, these same production steps happen in a single building, which is of course much more efficient. While Tesla's Fremont factory took around 10 years to be able to produce their 2 millionth car and to get to an installed annual capacity of around 650,000 per year, Gigafactory Shanghai recently surpassed that installed annual capacity and already built their 1 millionth vehicle all in approximately three years. And Tesla Shanghai should continue to grow from here and their second millionth car will come at a much quicker pace than their first millionth. So as you can see, as compared to their Fremont factory, their Shanghai factory is ramping extremely fast. And in addition, as Tesla talked about at their recent Investors Day in March, while Tesla's Fremont factory has been able to reduce the labor hours for the Model Y as they increased Model Y output at that factory, Tesla's Shanghai factory is even more efficient and has been able to build more Model Ys with less labor hours than Fremont, which is of course a testament to how their new streamlined factory makes a big difference. And also the Tesla engineers and the Tesla team who have worked hard to really improve their processes based on what they learned from their factory. Next, as we move to Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas, this is Tesla's first factory to implement their structural battery pack into the Model Y, which is of course a revolutionary uh, manufacturing process. At this factory, limited production began in late 2021. And in April of 2022, the first customer deliveries happened. And then already by August of 2022, Tesla announced that they were able to achieve 1000 Model Ys built in a single week. In September of 2022, that factory hit a milestone of building their 10,000th vehicle. Then in December of 2022, Tesla announced that that factory had achieved 3000 Model Ys built in a single week. If you take a look at that 3,000 per week run rate and you multiply that by 52 weeks in a year, that gives you an annualized run rate of over 150,000 per year. So it only took Tesla approximately one year to get to this milestone as compared to the Fremont factory, which only broke 100,000 vehicles being produced in a single year in 2017, which is around four and a half to five years after initial production. In addition, when it comes to installed annual capacity and Tesla's Q4 2022 update letter once again, Tesla listed their installed annual capacity at Gigafactory Texas as greater than 250,000. Next, moving to Tesla's Gigafactory in Germany, Gigafactory Berlin. In October of 2021, Tesla held a county fair there at the Gigafactory. Then in March of 2022, Tesla delivered the first vehicles built at this factory. In June of 2022, Tesla announced that they were already able to build 1,000 Model Ys in a single week. Then they achieved a rate of 2,000 Model Ys per week in October of 2022 then 3,000 per week in December, and most recently in February of this year, 2023, that factory was able to build 4,000 Model Ys in a single week. What Tesla has been able to accomplish so quickly, especially at these new factories that are ramping so fast, is quite incredible. And Tesla recently announced on March 1st of this year that Tesla as a company was able to produce their 4 millionth vehicle, and that vehicle was produced at Gigafactory Texas. Now, so far I've given a broad perspective of Tesla's ramp and really given an outside view of how impressive this is. I'd like to now move uh, beyond those numbers and talk about the how behind Tesla was able to ramp up these factories and talk about how Tesla has improved their manufacturing processes over the years. This is a topic that the Tesla team talked about quite a bit at their recent March 1st, 2023 Investor Day, as various Tesla executives really kind of detailed how they have learned with every generation of vehicle and how they have improved their processes. For example, Tesla's chief designer Franz von Holzhausen mentioned, today we produce cars differently than we did 10 years ago but the end result is always an exciting, futuristic, and desirable set of vehicles. So back in 2008, when we were designing the Model S, we didn't have a factory. In fact, we had a really small engineering team and a tiny design team, but that allowed design to lead all the conversations. It let us innovate forward thinking ideas. But that whole process resulted in a linear process. We designed first, then we engineered, 
Then we figured out how to manufacture it. We knew we had to do better in order to scale. And as part of the master plan that you've read, Model 3 needed to be a smaller, more efficient and more affordable version of the Model S, but had to be equally great. So we approached the process a little bit differently than the first time around, and we were able to combine design, engineering, and manufacturing process all at the same time. But somewhere along the way, we changed the manufacturing process to be fully automated, but we had already engineered it, so things didn't go as well as planned. Lars Moravi added on to the comments made by Franz by saying, like Franz said, automating something that we designed to be built manually is super hard. Franz then went on to mention with the Cybertruck, we designed a vehicle around a vision that actually started with the manufacturing process. And in this case, the materials actually dictated the design. Lars Moravi added, what that stainless steel opportunity did for us, it has let us rethink the factory footprint. We don't stamp those. That's a huge part of it. We don't even paint them. So our footprint got smaller and we started to think about innovative ways to take those constraints and make great products. So ideally we would design, engineer, manufacture, and plan for automation happening together. It gives us the opportunity to question requirements. During this portion of the Investor Day presentation, it was made very clear that as a result of questioning the requirements of manufacturing a vehicle, this led Tesla to develop the large underbody castings for the Model Y. And apparently the structural battery pack design is also a product of this questioning, which helped Tesla to move to a more modular approach of manufacturing, which is apparently much more efficient. Tesla's next generation vehicle will take this modular approach to a whole new level and will allow Tesla to assemble individual portions of the car separately and then combine them together in a more efficient manner. Tesla's new factory that they should start building soon in Mexico will implement these new designs and I believe this factory will have considerably more automation on the production lines than ever before because it will be built into the design of the factory and the vehicle from the start. So as you can see from those comments from Franz and Lars, Tesla has learned from every vehicle generation and that is going to be carried into Tesla's next generation of vehicles, which should be even more incredibly efficient to manufacture. I'm really looking forward to getting details about that new vehicle and that new factory. Um, now, I just want to briefly, as we close this video, I want to talk about how Tesla is using software to also improve their manufacturing processes as compared to where they were in 2012 when they were ramping up the Model S. On this topic at Tesla's recent Investors Day, David Lau said, In the early days of manufacturing the Model S, we quickly realized that there are a lot of different ways that you can misassemble a car. You could forget to plug in a wire. You could not fully set a connector. You could pull a part from the wrong bin. So when we design manufacturing processes for Model 3 and all of our other vehicles going forward, we took a page from the software playbook which says, test early and test often. David then went on to discuss how now when a production associate plugs in various parts during the assembly process, the NCAR computer actually checks and confirms that the correct part has been installed and also runs a series of tests on that part. If any anomalies are found, an alert comes up and allows the problem to be fixed before the rest of the car is built. This allows Tesla to catch anomalies much quicker and allows them to fix them much more efficiently. So software is actually playing a big role in Tesla's production rates and production improvement as well. At their investors day, the Tesla team also talked about a number of component improvements that have increased efficiency of manufacturing as well. And I've talked about those in past videos, so I won't rehash this, but I will put up a couple links in the video description to videos that I've done on this topic, including a recent video that I put out about Tesla's new hairpin motor design. All in all, despite ramping up several factories at the same time and developing new vehicles like the Cybertruck, Tesla is extremely profitable and they are getting more and more efficient with every factory that they build. And really, once again, this is only going to get better with their Gigafactory that they're building in Mexico. I'd love to hear from you what you think about all this in the comments section below. And I also want to say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also, I want to say thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.